Hello and welcome to the first issue of Comic Book Podcast. We're your weekly reading club that talks about first issue comic books. We've got a special one for you. Best of. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> Can you believe the landscape of of any industry, video games, movies, books? We're all taking a gander back upon a very B minus year of 2023 and saying, what were the A plus things that existed <laughs> within 2023? But you know what? Only one podcast has the balls to do their best of 23 in, in 2024. 2024. That's exactly right. We were very <laughs> formal about this and said, 2024 has got to end. Yep. We got to get all those stragglers in before we can really say, what was the what was the finest? What was the creme of the crop? Also, we understand SEO and know that if we release our best of in in the midst of the other oceans of best of episodes, you might you know you might not see ours. So and we that, wanted to make sure you see it. And that's why our best of twenty four episode is coming out in July. Is that what we decided? Yeah, I mm-hmm. think so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so we'll be the first one. Really get to see it <laughs> because after July, it's all kind of crap. It's, it's all down as far as coming. Yeah. All right, so we are going to cover a handful of topics on mm-hmm. some of our personal favorites, yep. bests. Um, if there are any woes, contradicting opinions on any of these yeah. verdicts that any we called out. Any or rabble rabbles. Please make those heard to my fellow co-hosts who are... Greg Lichtai. Vargas. And then I'm Mike D. Um, can, I make, can, can I do one bit before we get going? Sure. I feel like to add some gravitas to this whole thing, these awards need a name. And it can't be the firsties, and it can't be the clubbies. <laughs> okay? All right. But I feel like no one has done this yet, especially in the in the comic book What's he podcast, say? of what these awards are. And I think we should call them the besties. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cute. For you sure. Know? Uh-huh. Like so, this is the first issue club besties. I love it. I do like that. Okay, yeah, cool. All right. And then the logo is a friendship bracelet or a heart necklace that comes in two yeah, pieces. Like oh, a XOXO uh-huh. Uh-huh. gossip girl. <laughs> I got a bestie gossip girl. <laughs> cool. Okay, so these are the besties. Neat. The besties. Um, time permitting, we may cover some first issues. Just so we get them in at the end of the episode, but we'll see. Yeah, Andy did his due diligence and read some actual books. Well, Andy read Moon Knight, is what Andy. Read. Andy is chomping at the bit to talk about Moon Knight, which you it's know fine. what? We'll get into it at the end of the episode. That's well, fine. and my last uh, category is best Moon Knight is best death. <laughs> oh, so we'll have to see where this Mark Millar's career. <laughs> Very um, good. Okay, we're going to kick this off with some of the more heavy-hitting categories. Traditional mm-hmm. besties. Yeah, yes. and then we'll get into some of our, our funner ones. We've got six <laughs> larger categories, and then and then we're on to some more fun stuff. Okay. Um, uh, question one. This isn't necessarily best, um, the overall best writer, in our opinions. I'm... I more posed a question to everybody. Yeah. What writer had the best 2023? And we've got some nominees in here. We threw in Tom Taylor, who won an Eisner Mm -hmm. for Nightwing. Chip Zdarsky wrote both Daredevil and Batman at the this same past time. year, <laughs> like and public domain. Let's not public forget domain. public domain. Yeah. Uh, I think Stillwater ended this past yeah, year. Yeah. Howard the Duck. Uh, New Newburn, Newburn came yeah. came back. So, uh, I mean, a massive year for him. Kelly Thompson. Kelly Thompson. Oh, put a uh, cap on Captain Marvel, and then went on to write Black Cloak mm-hmm. and The Coal, which are fantastic yeah. comics, and Birds of Prey. She's currently writing. That's right. Uh, Shout out to your guy, Jed McKay. My boy. Jed McKay. Uh, Caught a couple strays this year with his <laughs> Spider-Man stuff and his other endeavors, but that's all right. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> Tom King and Rom V are worth mentioning because they did a lot of great stuff as well and did double duty on a lot of things. Yeah, actually, I think this week it got announced that Rom V's Detective Comics 
is coming to an end. So his Dang. his run's coming to an end. I've loved it. I I love the gothic kind of opera feel of it all. Uh, that is a book that number one. I hope they do a big collective hardcover of. They're gonna have to because I want to buy every cover. Yeah. Of that it's issue, immaculate. like they're insane. They're so yeah. good. Uh, for the first issue club, best writer. Uh, or what what writer had the best 2023 though i've got al ewing who has been writing immortal thor which is a book that's getting a lot of love mm-hmm. in year end lists and that book kind of just it's only like 5 6 issues deep mm-hmm. so far and already making an impact and making a lot of people's lists um throughout the entire year has been writing x men red which yep. is most X heads you ask. It's one of their favorite books alongside Immortal X Men. And then Venom, another series that has just taken Eddie Brock and mm-hmm. his family to a place that's spacey, larger than life, ethereal. Yeah. And to have those big ongoings and then start another third massive ongoing mm-hmm. that has been getting as much kudos as it has, especially to follow up uh, Thor after you've had the likes of Jason Aaron, who, you know, did his own big thing on it. And the the history of that Thor character, I think it's impressive that people are liking Immortal Thor so much. Well, and don't forget his smaller books that he's done. He's been the helm of those Defenders series, yeah, for yep. you know, for, for years since on uh, he did a wasp mini that people really liked. Had Ant-Man, some cool covers. Did they also do we only find them when they're dead. That yep. was years ago though. Yeah, did it just? I thought it ended this year. Did it end this year? Think, Pretty recently. I think it ended oh this wow! Year. Okay, I didn't realize it went that long. Um, and is he doing Avengers Incorporated, or is that E viewing? No. Oh, uh, I know, right? I think it's Al. I think yeah. I, think I thought Ewing. it was too. I don't know because that book slaps hard. And it got canceled. And it got canceled. It's, it's all right. Real it's all right. shame. It's okay. We've, it's all right. Five We're not issues. canceling Al Ewing, just no. to be clear. <laughs> We've never. How do we feel about that pick? Yeah. Good. I have a couple honorable mentions, but so far, Al Ewing is, is a, a phenomenal. Decent, a decent pick. A, yeah. A phenomenal had a great pick. year. The, of, the, of the ongoings he has, mm-hmm. I think three overlapping ongoings that are all big titles. Yeah pretty big uh pretty big year for the him. The fact that he can juggle all that and not lose a thread in yeah. any of his and stories and that everything's maintained, I guess the quality is it has. super super impressive. Yeah. Um I just wanted to throw in real quick uh Stephanie Phillips had an amazing 2023. Sure. She did um Cosmic Ghost Rider for Marvel. She did uh the Eight Limbs out on Humanoid, but it's about Maui Tai and oh, she yeah. did I think Harley Quinn she ended her run on Harley Quinn this year. And like she's just been a showstopper and like really showing Fantastic that she writer. can do anything. Mm-hmm. Anything. And then uh, so I just I just want people to go out there and read some more Stephanie Phillips stuff cuz we need <laughs> we need more books by her for yes. sure. All right, right on. All right, Andy Cosines. Signed. Vargas, sorry. You go by Vargas on this. It I doesn't call you Andy. Okay. All right. Which artist had the best 2023. That is our next category. We've got nominees of the likes of Sweeney Boo. Sweeney Boo. Huge breakout year for Sweeney Boo, who's st- like got the Harley Quinn. A, a cover artist doing more more covers and, and ongoing interiors with Harley Quinn. So I thought she was worth noting this year. Peach Momoko. Who? N- not only, <laughs> not <laughs> only the one of the most prolific cover artists we have, but um, is constantly reinventing character designs Mm -hmm. um, almost monthly, be they in covers or be they on interiors of books that she's written. And seeing seeing the heavy lifting that goes into redesigning all those characters is just... Yeah, specifically like her Demon Day stuff. Fantastic. It's amazing. I don't have a list of many Daniel Warren Johnson things that have happened this year, but Transformers... Is a huge one, obviously. Yeah. Transformers do a power bomb, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think do a power bomb might have ended this year, or the mm-hmm. trade came out and yeah. it brought more attention to do a power bomb. Yeah, um, but I feel like 
I just hear I've heard his name mentioned more this year than I have any, any previous year, even though we might not have seen the the busiest publishing year from him. I think so. So do a power bomb. The majority of it came out 2023. And like oh. just watching that get more acclaim and more acclaim as it came out. I mean, we've been following him since Murder Falcon and Extremity and Little Bird. Like he has been someone that's always been on our radar. And actually, I don't think he did Little I think I misspoke. Ian Bertram yeah, might have done that's Little right. Bird. Um, but like to see him finally just like get the recognition that we always knew he was going to get. Yeah. It was so satisfying. And then to see him on Transformers was was incredible. Yeah. Like no it, other artist was was born more to do Transformers. His than original Warren art Johnson. for that sells out so, so oh, fast. You, you can't can even just, like, he's got a really rabid fan base. Yeah. And on top of that, he did Jurassic League. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right, Jurassic yeah. League. <laughs> My breakout book for twenty twenty three. Um someone else mentioned Maria Wolf and Raphael Grandpa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Grandpa is kind of a staple, at least for me, in yeah. like the cover world. But I think he's at least worth mentioning because he's doing uh, Gargoyle of Gotham, the prestige black label book for DC. Yeah, beautiful book. Um, writing and drawing. Yeah. So that I think that's a pretty big thing for somebody who's mostly known for covers. And Maria Wolf, kind of the same thing. Um, you could argue that 2022 was like her breakout year. Yeah, but I think so. She's got you know the Marvel Snap cards has like a Maria Wolf series now. Yeah, she got a like a one in twenty five Moon Knight cover. Um, I would guarantee that her uh, cover work has slowed down because she's probably on an interior. Oh, book right now. I would Maybe. I would love that. To see her on like a Predator book or an Alien book, I, I, anything big action, anything Daniel Warren Johnson can do, Maria Wolf can do. Yeah, and like a more like heavy metal. Yeah. And it's crazy to say that because Daniel Warren Johnson is a heavy metal guy. Yeah, like when when Murder Falcon was coming out, he would have corresponding metal songs to come out. I think the Tuesday before to get you excited for for uh, for Murder Falcon. So like. To say that Maria War- Wolf is like even more heavy metal than Daniel Warren Johnson is, is no small kudos yeah. that we give. All that being said, a great year for art. There's a lot of artists we didn't mention. The first issue club artist of the year is Dan Mora. Can't Dan go Mora. wrong. A fucking stunner. Yeah. Year uh, after year. Amazing covers. The quality of interiors is phenomenal. From. You I'm know, sure he's a robot. World's finest to Shazam, um, doing amazing things. I think breathing. What 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 puts him on the top of this list for me is just the amount of fresh life and excitement his art style brings to DC, mm-hmm. and especially with characters and and titles that maybe seem a little corny or tired. Mm-hmm. His style of art just like immediately makes you interested in that comic book yeah. and makes them that much more fun to read. So. We've talked about this before. His style really harkens back to the golden age of superheroes with its familiarity and with its its dynamicism. Dynamicism, that's not a word, but we're going to use it anyway. <laughs> but like he he rem- kind of harkens back to like the good old days uh, air quotes of comic books of just like they they cost 25 cents and you could get them at the grocery stores it's like he has that iconic flavor to every one of his characters he does he's he exists in this uncanny middle space mm-hmm. that's like nostalgia classic comic heavy black simple lines all that good stuff mm-hmm. but you can tell as somebody who grew up with animation and all that influence that more modern artists yeah. have and the the balance between those two things makes for really and and what's even beautiful stuff wilder is it's like it's so uniquely dan mora mm-hmm. like when you look at it you can't just say like oh i see a little bit of like disney animation here like i see a little bit of like so and so here it's like he has like taken every influence that w- wanted him to be an artist mm-hmm. and made it so directly his style yeah and it's just, it's incredible. Like, And I think it's worth mentioning when we're saying 
who's our first issue club writer or artist of the year, mm-hmm. we're really talking about our particular tastes. And sure. our tastes skew towards these people who really stand out from a crowd with their own unique styles. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of people who might say, I'm more of a traditionalist. I like stuff to look like Jim Lee. Mm. I like everything anatomically correct and with a certain amount of realism to it. Yeah. And that isn't historically, I think, what our tastes might always gravitate to. Sure. I think that Dan Mora is a crossover person who can like magically appease both Everyone. people. But you might not ag- might not agree with a lot of our picks here today and say like Jorge Jimenez is like one of your, you know, favorite artists. And I th- I think he's an amazing artist too and had a great 2023, but yeah. the- he didn't do Once in Future. You know, <laughs> and he didn't didn't do the Jack White variant. That's <laughs> true, true. Or the no, he was the Nicolas Cage variant. <laughs> Or the Jerry yeah, Seinfeld the Nick, variant. The Nick Cage and Jerry Seinfeld variants were. Or the Paul McCartney variant. Were fun ones this year for sure. So uh, I don't know. Just a little note on our personal tastes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, just one last note on the artist thing. I, I do agree w- with what you said, Mike D, but like Dan Mora definitely made the biggest splash out of all the amazing artists that came out this year. Mm-hmm. Like that's the one that really I saw on social media. People were just like, Dan Mora, Dan Mora. He can, Moore, sell, he like can sell a Moore. comic. People will buy comics, mm-hmm. not because Mark Wade is writing them, but because Dan Mora is drawing them, which when you're uh, uh, paired up with a writer as popular and as loved as Mark Wade, right. yeah, the, that's the fact that people are buying, <laughs> buying <laughs> yeah, a book yeah. for your art still is, yeah. is quite a feat. All right, let's keep moving. Um, best Indie Series. Best indie series. Contentious here, probably. Yeah, this yeah. one is tough. This um, one is really tough. A lot of tough uh, decisions to make. Um, I mentioned several books, like Saga has been back and mm-hmm. is consistently fantastic. Yeah. Damn, the, Damn Them All mm-hmm. has ran throughout the year. I believe it started in 2022. And has been ongoing ever since. Mm-hmm. Um, but fantastic book. Indigo Children made a splash. Oh, yeah. Local Man made a splash. Beneath the Trees. Beneath the Trees. Big, uh, big arrival. And then Antarctica is a book that I know Greg loves. Yeah. we uh, um, Harrower was, came out Harrow, on yeah. Vault. Mm-hmm. Was a phenomenal horror book that came out that I fell in love with. Um, trying to, uh, uh, Andy, do you have any ones that are sticking out for you for Indy? We've we've got some other ones like later down on the list in other categories. Mm-hmm. You know, we could talk about like the neighbors or right seasons have teeth. Yeah, or um, the nasty it was a great. Oh, the nasty was so comedy so, horror so crossover. Good. Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot of the forged. The f- yeah, the forged Fantastic was, a, was amazing. <clears throat> um. So I almost tons of stuff. Sometimes I feel like the larger format stuff. I'm almost like it's is that cheating? Yeah. <laughs> it's so like when you're holding it, you're like this is amazing. Partially because like the format is so impressive. It's like HD. It's like yeah. widescreen comic right. book. <laughs> oh, those are beautiful comics. That's a book that needs to be talked about more. Yeah. So glad it got mentioned. Uh, Bar- oh, sorry. Barbaric also expanded their universe, universe yeah. and yeah. it's every one of them is just so fun. You can't go wrong with a talking bloodthirsty axe. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But for best indie series, there can only be one winner. And the fic winner is World Tr33. <laughs> <laughs> Pronounced perfectly, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Just as the creator intended. This is a James Tanyan book. Ever heard of him? Or Tanyan? Tanyan. Tanyan. Uh, obviously a wonderful writer mm-hmm. who's put all of his uh, brain power into create her own titles mm-hmm. this year. We've seen more independent stuff from him than we normally see. This book initially popped off because of a color misprinting on the first issue, right? Which I think kind of undermined. The importance. The, the story <laughs> that was being told, right? That you are just kind of like, 
after this misprint thing, and that became the narrative yeah. of of World Tree. But it has since been a book that's has tons of retailer incentives. It's ordered out the ass. Um, yeah. It's got a really interesting and I think relevant commentary on our society's fascination with violence, mm-hmm. our addiction to technology, mm-hmm. the subcultures that exist on the internet and how influential those are. Mm-hmm. are the idea of community and who can find community where and what mm-hmm. type of personalities are drawn to these subsects there's just a i think a lot of interesting themes that world tree addresses in a fun sci-fi way with topics that are very very difficult to address like things like mass shootings that need to be uh need to be discussed uh-huh. and we need to have things in i guess the zeitgeist that yeah. that continue those conversations but it's tough when no one wants to read a comic book about a mass shooting like let's like it, the way you reference it and go about it has to be very delicate and, yeah. and very nuanced. Well, and I also think there's a lot of people who are like I'm an edgy writer or a director and mm-hmm. I'm going to make a movie that's like in your face so much violence and it comes across as like so corny and missing yeah. the point of like what the violence is trying to say. They focus on the brutality of it. And like, yeah. like we get the brutality. Mm-hmm. We see it on the news. We see it in the live footage. But what Tianyin has done is pulled it back and is just like, what's fueling this? What what is what is the motivation yeah. here? What is like surrounding the brutality and the violence? And that's what makes this book so brilliant. Yeah, I think he's written several books about the end of the world. Four that I can think of off the top of my head. Oh my I, God. I was gonna say they're amazing. <laughs> they're all fucking amazing. <laughs> Like, World Tree really feels like an extension of whatever it was, the mimetic, cognetic, eugenic eugenic cycle. Like, it feels like an extension of that. World Trinic. And then his DC Black Label book was... Nice House on the Lake. Yeah. Nice House on the Lake. So good. Yeah. Yeah. So good. But I feel like he's found... He's had so much experience in these sort of, like, big, awful ideas and then making these artful statements out of them. That he, he's one of the only creators that I would trust with like walking this razor thin line, of yeah, how to do something like this in a way that's like palatable, yeah, and still gets like a point across. And it, it, I think it just speaks to his um, brilliance and his understanding of the medium and how to write a story because there has been many other great writers who have tried to tackle difficult subjects. And have just fallen flat on their faces. Yeah. Because it's it's not easy to do. And James has done it so, so well. E- even though we know he's a vetted writer from from so many years of reading his comic books, the way that he's just he's just so successfully navigating this is like, you know, master class. Yeah. All that said, please no one try to adapt this book to to a movie, no, yeah, <laughs> no, because it will, it will come, it will end up being a generic slasher movie, and it will yeah. be dog shit. Do not adapt this one. It's the same reason Fight Club shouldn't have been a movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, but like, that, but that's leave, really funny. Leave like, it on the book. <laughs> God, talk about movies that haven't aged well. Just kind of missed the fucking mark. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, best big two series. Is our next category. Mm -hmm. Another hard one to do. Um, I've got honorable mentions such as Immortal X-Men. There's a million X-Men titles. Yeah, pick one. I think Karen Gillan's Immortal Mm X-Men is the... Mass is just just the the best one, cream of the crop of of all those books. Would you consider like the Hellfire Gala like an event? Because they they do like a a yearly annual of and the there's hell. always a handful of books that feed into uh, it and yeah. it's usually a big something always disastrous happens mm-hmm. at the hellfire gala i think this year's was very prominent yeah 
um, of, uh, it was the basically the the signaling of the end of the Krakoan era. Yes. So I think that's that's huge. Oh yeah, big to do. <laughs> big, big to do. Big to do. To do. Um, okay. Someone also put Moon Knight. Yeah. Don't know who that could have been. Who could have written Moon Knight? Moon Knight. I'm not familiar. Nightwing is the comic that took, you know, the the Eisner this past year. Sure. A lot of great on butts alone. <laughs> yeah. That's right. His fanny's pretty tight in those in those spandex but, butts pants. Butts win Eisners. I've said it a million <laughs> times. All right. But again. <laughs> B-U-T-T, but again, there can only be one winner. Mm-hmm. And for me, the bestie goes to. It's Wonder Woman by Tom King. Totally. Uh, hasn't been out that long. I battled with whether or not this comic had enough issues to be the best series of 2023. Those few issues that did come out were so impactful for me. Such a great new direction for what a Wonder Woman book can be that it's just very exciting and I just couldn't get another book ahead of it in in my list. Yeah, there's there's a lot of great Wonder Woman stories out there, right? Like Gail Simone wrote some classics, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, George Perez wrote some classic Wonder Woman stories. Rico Tamaki. Yeah. Yeah. I loved her run. But this book felt like a super, super fresh take, not only on the character, but like the world that she lives in. And the mm-hmm. mythos. They introduced the that's, new fucking lasso. That's what I mean. That's, like That's brilliant. It's all just feels so fresh and new and exciting. Like yeah. you're excited to have the next issue come out because you have no idea what's going to be in it. Yeah. And again, like we noticed with Tinian, Tom King is also one of those guys who can work in amazing cutting social commentary into those comics really seem seamlessly mm-hmm. and not have it feel like you're being preached to yeah. while you're reading a fun well, fantasy Well, I mean, the or guy lived book. through the shit. Like, yeah. he, he's experienced things that I could never imagine. He's a real-life James Bond. Yes. And, like, <laughs> the fact that he chose to do comic books instead of just going from island to island taking out supervillains is, is yeah. just wild. He had that option. <laughs> All right. You think he ever tortured anybody with a battery and I, some jumper cables? I know for a fact he did. <laughs> that's why we can't interview him because we that's like the first we thing. We don't we have the have. clearance. Yeah, yeah. We don't have the <laughs> Our next topic was teased by the likes of Greg. <laughs> we are moving on to best event. And uh like we mentioned, the fall of X was kicked off with a lot of Hellfire Gala stuff. Yes. That's a, a nominee. Uh, Lazarus Planet, mm-hmm. I thought, was a fu- like a quick, easy, fun one. Yeah. You had Lazarus Pit Rain across the globe. It gave a lot of people superpowers and altered the superpowers of a lot of heroes that we know and love already. Mm-hmm. Um, really easy to dip your toe into. Um so yeah, Fall of X, Sins of Sinister, Flash, One Minute War, really fun book that takes place. I in, would have never known about within that event. In a minute. For, <laughs> except for Andy. Uh, notably, we're leaving off some that maybe I won't mention. We like to be positive on this podcast, but fill in the blank for yourself if there were some big events that we're not, we're not mentioning. <laughs> Here. But was it a snoozer? <laughs> <laughs> you could say that. Uh, which, to be fair, if you cool know concept, a, cool concept, cool concept, and a lot of the standalone books were really fun. There was just four hundred fifty thousand of too them. Too many of them. We're talking about night terrors. <laughs> But to pay kudos, to pay kudos to DC. way too many for people to follow. Way too many, but they paused everything else while they did it. So I I will admit, too many books for a mediocre event, but thank you for not making other Batman books and other Superman books. That you had to buy on top of it. Come out at the same time. Other than Black Label stuff. That's fine, though. That's (laughs) a completely different universe. Yeah. (laughs) 
there can only be one, <laughs> as the famous <laughs> saying goes. And and I always repeat. The bestie goes to? I think the bestie goes to Captain America Cold War. I yeah. agree. Agree. I okay, think, great. I think this is probably going to ruffle some feathers. Yes. If we were, if we had more clout, uh-huh. this would ruffle a lot of feathers. Well, I think yeah. we have more clout than you think. <laughs> if if anyone was listening to what we're talking right now, um, but yeah, I think the 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 culmination of the Jackson Lansing, Colin Kelly, Captain America run. Mm-hmm. Was so good. It was so good bringing mm. those two stories together and 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 the, having the two Captain America titles that have had disparate stories come together at the end mm. in a way that was like planned this whole time. Yep. The changes they made to Bucky and the Captain America mythos, mm. the introduction of Sharon Carter as the new Destroyer, like so just cool. so much, so stuff many cool happened. things. It felt important. Yeah, yeah. Like in in a in a non hyperbolic like flowery way, that whole event felt really pivotal mm-hmm. for a lot of different characters, not just Captain America. Like a lot of things happened in this book. Yeah, yeah. It 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 felt all the all the good stuff that a good Captain America story should have. It had spy espionage mm-hmm. it had big superhero moments it had moments. i loved the winter soldier oh, one shot that kicked it off so much yeah i bought a page from it <laughs> yeah it's right there if you're watching the video i mean i i dare say at least from us three i think aside from the ed brubaker cap stuff like this was like the next big pivotal cap thing i mean like ta coates did like a great job with his mm-hmm. captain america run but this just felt Huge. This felt bombastic. Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah, so good. Uh, I think this duo left them off the nominees for Best Writer. One, it was confusing because they're a writing pit duo. <laughs> it was two people. They're cheating. <laughs> but they're also writing Guardians of the Galaxy this year, which they did the whole group fall thing, which I thought was fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So great, great people to keep your eye on. Yeah. And, and hopefully they continue to. Stick it out in the in the comic. Book are you space. are you less impressed or more impressed that it takes two of them to write a book instead of one? <laughs> I think it's way more impressive. <laughs> it's a bit. That was a bit. I'm just. But... I I mean, truly though, like, can you imagine having to work with me? No. For a job, all the time. No, because we'd be too wrapped up in jackassery and tomfoolery. That's what I mean. We would we get would be, nothing. We would be fired. <laughs> It'd be fun. For the two I'm months, even, I'm not even going to ask Mike because we know that we would drive him to murder. <laughs> I think he would fire us himself. Of course he would. <laughs> we barely get to stay on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and our our last of our main mm-hmm. uh, awards, the main bestie, the main besties are Can't is we get to those juicy side besties is <laughs> is best new series, and this is a comic wherein. Its first issue had to come out in 2023. Mm-hmm. We've covered tons of them. Yep. Probably 100, around 150. We talk about at least three issues, and we do an episode almost every week. So, right. um, Minimum. Yeah. Uh, we could mention Wonder Woman, <laughs> which I named already as being, you know, my favorite of the big two books this past year. Um you can't do this category without mentioning Transformers and Void Rivals, yeah. which I think brought just so much hype to the comic book industry, Yeah, brought a lot of people who haven't read or bought comics in a while back in, mm-hmm. and the fact that they're doing that on an independent publisher is really cool. Yeah, So I love that. Um, Kelly Thompson moving to Birds of Prey, and as a whole, that Leo Romero art is just absolutely gorgeous. Crazy. Just and the crazy. Jordi Belair colors on that are unlike anything I've ever seen in comics. Wonderful series. I forgot to mention it or write it down, but the Conan book yeah. is supposed to be like bananas good. I only read the first issue because mm-hmm. I can't keep up with everything, but yeah. 
That's supposed to be absolutely amazing. Yep. And is it King Size Conan is coming back mm-hmm. this year in 24? The big formatted. Yeah, the big like magazine size. Yeah. So I think there's only been one or two issues of this for my honorable mention, but I really loved Petrol Head. Yeah. Oh yeah. That and book I I think it had I think it has some really cool legs, but not pun in, unintended because it's about cars and stuff. But the art in that was was dynamic. It was so cool. I'd never seen anything so crisp and like visually, like the, you could feel the movement mm-hmm. in in all of the art. And then, um, dang it, I just blanked on it, but it was the it's the Jeff Lemire book, Phantom Road. Yes, Phantom and Road. Gabriel Walta and yeah. Gabriel Walta. That book did that start in twenty twenty three? Yeah, it did. Okay, the very very wonderful comic. Yeah. I love it. It was so good. It's so good. And we were just talking about this. Our bones dust. Our bones dust. Book slaps. <laughs> the, too. One of the creepiest books it's another to one. end out twenty twenty three. Yeah, that's one that I almost think like, depending on how it pans out, we might consider that one for best of twenty twenty four because it came out so yeah so close to the end of the year. Yeah. That's but, like that's like Forrest Gump coming out right before they announced the Oscars. It's yeah. like it's, <laughs> it seems almost unfair. True. The bestie goes to. But there can only be one. There can <laughs> only be one bestie for best new series. Um, a comic which has had three covers on the cover price. Hot 10 this past month and I think are currently still in the hot 20. Stray dogs. Which... <laughs> You cannot deny the heat surrounding this book beneath the trees where nobody sees. Yep. Um, Came out of fucking nowhere. I on, really... On IDW. On of I, all books. IDW. You know, I don't know that we have... We don't have a a lot of publisher categories on here, really. Yeah. Um, but IDW, for as much as they try to not put out originals, it seems... Their original content was outstanding Stellar. in 2023. Yeah. Stellar. So many great original stories um, on that publisher and, and great books to check out. Beneath the Trees. Antarctica is, is a top cow IDW. Oh, crossover. is it? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, there was another, There was a third one. Fuck. I'll look it up. Sorry. All right. Um Beneath the Trees is into second or third printing on the first issue. Oh, yeah. And it's and it's sells out each time. Number two just came out yeah. two and weeks ago. The second issue was fantastic. Yeah. Um single writer and artist, yep. Patrick Hovarth. Yep. Does everything on the book. Um, there's just so much heat around it. I didn't feel like I could pick anything else for this category. And it, it, that's rare that a book that came out so late in 2023, or like <laughs> so late in the year, would seem like such an obvious like. But but it completely is, and yeah. I think it's because. And correct me if I'm wrong, Club. I think it's because the second issue was so strong. The second issue mm-hmm. was great. Mm-hmm. I think if the second issue hadn't have come out this year, I don't know that I would have put it on. Or if the second the, issue fell flat. The list, or exactly right. But it was another stunner. So it's like, it, it makes me excited to see what the rest of the issues are going to be. Because mm-hmm. it's just like, if he can nail issue one and two, and issue two, we don't we never talk about it because we always focus on the first issues. The second issue is maybe the hardest issue <laughs> to nail. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many sophomore slumps in this business. Yeah. That, uh, like... The fact that he was able to crush, like, hit a second home run, yeah, is is nuts. But I mean, it, it, there's so many things working to this book's advantage. You have writer and illustrator are the same person. Yep. You have it on an independent publisher. You have kind of just like this swell of community support out of nowhere. Like this book caught fire on social media, like instantaneously mm-hmm. like the the day it came out people were losing their fucking minds like yep. it, this set uh the uh, x or twitter or whatever you're calling it now on on you know uh, in a fu- in a fury for like a month straight it's fun when this stuff happens cuz it's so rare in comics now because mm-hmm. 
a lot of the hype for things just is like People, manufactured yeah manufactured and people are pre-ordering and doing so many things on speculation yeah. yep. this book was just a new person doing a new thing and we knew nothing about it until you the day it comes out yeah. and you took a chance on it and you open the page it was so genuine yeah it's so genuine and it was beautiful and the story was captivating it was it's everything you want oh to my god about. it felt like a fucking hbo animated tv show mm-hmm. But like that, I was reading. It, yeah, it's nuts. It was nuts. All right. Do you want to rip through some yes extra category besties? Let's You've got some other it. IDW books to yeah, mention. Yeah. So f- for my money, IDW is definitely the publisher of the year. This is just Ooh. kind of off the cuff. All okay. right. But just to give you guys some of the stuff they've done this year, obviously beneath the trees, they did Bryn Moore. Yeah. Did you guys oh, read Bryn Moore? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They did. Um, all of those Dark Spaces books that Scott Snyder's doing. Oh, yep. yeah. IDW. Earth Divers. Oh, my God. IDW. Earth Divers was nuts. Uh, Godzilla, Here Be Dragons. Not the most prestige book. Still a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> we'll give you that one. <laughs> we'll give you that yeah. one. <laughs> Dead eyes for that. It is a reaction. <laughs> Hunger and Dusk. Yeah. yeah Hunger and yeah. Dusk was like one of the best indies this year. Yep. Ministry of Compliance. Yeah, another oh, great God, that man. huge first issue. Yep. Um the all the Rick and Morty stuff that came out. Okay, well, IDW. Again, we'll give you that one. Okay, fine. <laughs> and um the Usagi Yojimbo Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover. Yep. Was IDW. Yep, 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 yep. The regular stuff is on Dark Horse, but yes. some of that Usagi stuff comes out. It's on, on, it's on Dark Horse slash Dogu, which is uh his imprint now. Yeah. Stan Sakai's. So I, so IDW, yeah, you're right. Had a pretty fucking banner year. Again, I mean, you compare it to the other stuff. Like, they didn't have the most stuff come out, but the stuff they did have come out yeah, slapped. Who knew losing their licensing would uh, benefit them in a positive way? Hey, you either got to, like, sack up or, you know, you go out of business. <laughs> All right. While we're, while we're on the topic of Patrick Hovarth, we'll do Best Newcomer to Comics. Sure. Of which I think he's worth mentioning as a nominee, I also think Omnibus is worth mentioning. Those yeah. guys have been working towards that for totally. a long time. Yeah. But with Comixology making the move to the Kindle app. And just shitting the bed every night. This, Yeah, I think this was the year that more people realized what Omnibus was and was offering. Yep. Um, but my uh, best newcomer, the best he goes to, Distillery. For sure. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Nobody I, got more heat than that. Yeah. They're <laughs> huge smash at San Diego Comic Con, uh, that big booth with all of your favorite creators under one publisher mm-hmm. doing creator own things, trying some creative things with digital comics. And I, you know, we've suspected that they might try to become a digital publisher. Yeah. They could try to become their own retailer. Like they could do a lot of different things. They've got such. Um, name power yeah. and, and strength behind them that and, and they're killing it so far with these large format prestige yeah comics oh so maybe like a, a honorable mention for me this creator definitely isn't a newcomer in the industry but had made some huge moves in 2023 uh christian ward i feel like needs to be in the conversation for really making moves to let people know who he is he had bloodstained teeth which he wrote this is his first time writing. He did uh, Batman City of Madness, which is... Writing and Writing arting. and arting. And, and, and arting. Arting. <laughs> Excuse me, I arted. Uh, <laughs> and it, if you haven't read it yet, it is it is wild, and it's exactly what you want. And I feel like he is just gearing up for something incredible. Like, he had already had a banner year with 2023, and I am super excited to see what he has planned. He, he, he teased on his social media... That he has like five big projects planned for 2024 that I hey. am just chomping at the bit to figure out what they are. Maybe you'll make our list next year. Next year. Can't wait for the Christian Ward First Issue Club crossover. Yeah. I mean, the, the uh, Christian Ward did that awesome variant for our boys over at the Oblivion Bar Pod. So, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we got a couple of copies of that. So, hey, maybe this year First Issue Club will get its own variant. <laughs> Probably on like Batman. Yeah. The Mike D variant for Daredevil. There. Next category. <laughs> Best new big two character. We've got 
Trinity, Lizzie Prince, the daughter of Wonder Woman. Mm. Uh, Dream Spider was a big one that actually happened in 2023, as, yeah. as far ago as that may seem. Uh, Hollow's Eve, another oh, big yeah. Spider-Man character. Yeah. I Fail also, Safe is worth mentioning. Fail Safe was a great character. Wreck yeah. Rap. Yep. <laughs> oh, my uh-huh. God. Was really funny. Uh, you can't do this category without mentioning Cubisk Core. Who's that? Of course, uh, a, a an associate of the Sentium, who is a pure chaos incarnate, who this is a fun oh you're talking about gods lives in a scanner box. This is a fun bit. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. This is I'm Gods, a, right? I'm, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, this was a Hickman character from Gods that was just like the most obscure name, the most obscure backstory. Like whatever a skin. I was like, I had wrapping your head around a Skinner box. If you want to see some Jonathan Hickman bullshit, bullshit, go to like the Marvel fandom Wikipedia entry for Skinner box and be like, that's what's in God's. Uh, <laughs> be, be, be prepared to roll your eyes all the way to the back of your head. <laughs> okay. But obviously the bestie goes to spider, spider boy. boy. He's a spider, but a boy. That's right. He's an adolescent arachnid on the name alone. A uh, big new character to add. Yeah. I honestly, I feel like I, I feel like I can say this and not feel bad about it, just because it's a, a big two thing. I don't love Spider Boy, if I'm being honest, but I can't deny <laughs> hey, he moved units. <laughs> the yeah, the amount of comics it sold and how long those. When you're competing with Dog Man, you gotta be yeah. able to move <laughs> units. <laughs> All right. Best new direction. This is, you know, mm, mm-hmm. we're kind of thinking a, a legacy character that has kind of shifted gears. And we mentioned Chip Zdarsky's Batman. Yeah. Who he took that character in kind of a new direction. Teeny Howard's um, Catwoman. Al Ewing's Immortal Thor. Teeny Howard's Catwoman. Tom King's Wonder Woman. Um, Pepos's Punisher. Huge oh, yeah, wow, shift yeah. in direction there. Well, Jason Aaron's Punisher. Jason True. Aaron's Punisher was also 2023, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. He's dead. You can't get more new than that. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Frank. The First Issue Club bestie is Philip Kennedy Johnson's Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Uh, for me, the Donny Cates run left me a little sour. It was finished by... Ryan Otley? Ryan Otley, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know if his name was on it as like a writer, but the book kind of moved. It was. It was. He, okay. he made sure that yeah. contractually the last issue said write and, written and illustrated by Ryan Otley. So, yeah, started by Donny Cates, ultimately bailed on, and Ryan Otley stepped in to finish that run. We did this amazing, beautiful thing with Immortal Thor, and then oh. kind of made Bruce Banner this, like, a different kind of psychotic egomaniac yeah. who was more cartoony yeah. and piloting the Hulk like a mech. It sounded fun and funny, but it was, like, too much of a tonal I think change. Let, let's be real here. Biggest mystery of 2023 what happened to Donny Cates? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of background stuff that we don't know. I think a lot of books that he started were finished by other people. Yeah. I know Vanish was finished by Stegman, I think, uh-huh. and some others. So, like, uh, I don't know what's happening with Donny Cates. I wish him well. I know that he's probably going through some shit, and that's fine. But I feel like his Hulk run had some legs, and then his life happened. Donny yeah. Cates, his life happened, and then he had to step away from that book. So... I will agree that the best direction change is, yeah. The what we're, I guess, the positive spin on it that we're trying to make is Philip Kennedy Johnson did moved Hulk into a place where a lot of us are excited about Hulk again. There's yeah. a lot of like cult mysticism and and mm-hmm. magic in it, and it feels like a monster story again, which I think is where Hulk is maybe. The most, most successful yeah. in modern times 
it's not so heady as Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk run, Mm -hmm. which is, again, a breath of fresh air to just read something that's, like, easy to pick up month to month and easy to, like, understand what's going on. Yeah. It It is nice that the Hulk can exist in both dualities. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like you can, you can get a super heady Hulk story and you can also get just a fucking American Gladiator style yeah. Hulk story. We're like, you know what? I want to see Hulk smash. I want to see Hulk smash a lot, actually. <laughs> All right. What cover artist had the best 2023? We've got honorable mentions that are all heavy hitters like Peach Momoko. <laughs> Jen Bartell. These are some heavy hits. Joshua Sway Swaby. <laughs> did a little flip. <laughs> Folks, there can fucking <laughs> only be one, baby. And the bestie goes to. The bestie goes to David Nakayama. Had a great fucking year. Moved on to regular covers for Catwoman. Mm-hmm. Um which features a lot of shiny leather, Latex. which is where he shines. Shines. <laughs> uh, he's done. He did so many variants, retailer exclusive variants, convention exclusive variants. Like every month, there was some book from him that was. I'm gonna be on honest. some list. I always thought I was like he he carved such a fantastic niche for himself yeah. in variants. I was just like, he could just make a whole career out of doing random like, yeah. retailer variants. And then when they announced he was going to be the main cover artist, cover artist for Catwoman, mm. I was like, this guy's going to fucking blow down the door. Yeah. Like, he's he's in now. Yeah, You know what I mean? He's not going anywhere. He's like, done much more dynamic um, X-Men covers mm-hmm. over this past year, too. Yeah, So it's nice to see a lot of his retailer exclusive covers were like, a single character silhouette kind of done in that color bleed style. Yep. But we've seen way more interesting compositions from him this year, and those yep. have all been popular covers, I think. He did that um, Crypt, Crypt of Shadows cover for yeah. Marvel, too. Mm-hmm. Something else, a lot, something else One of, of the Bloodstone. Bloodstone books. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, in my opinion, he was the person that I was yeah. just seeing constant buzz. Oh, yeah. On some cover he had. His his art is so funny to me because it's like Definitely has a style you take that you can pick out. Yeah, you take like a familiar character and then you put like a Snapchat filter over it. Yeah. And it makes it like kind of like more voluptuous, a little more curvy, and like mm. it makes it like really pop off. It feels like it, it, it's been fed sugar cereal. Yeah. For like six hours straight, and you're it's, just like, damn, this is a good fucking time. It's just the right amount of cheesecake. Yeah, yeah. Family-friendly cheesecake. Yeah, exactly. All right, next category. What trend popped off the most in 2023? I think you nailed it in one with your pick. I mean, you've got, you have honorable mentions, but I think you nailed it. Honorable mentions include multiverses. Sure. (laughs) We're kind of burnt out. Yeah. Uh, Events. All over the place. Yeah. So many, so many events this year that I can like barely name them. They're too many, too the many cloud events. in my head. Uh, homage covers. Yeah, there oh my couldn't God. have been more homage covers this year, except for the Santa ones. Give me more Santa ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Harley Quinn ones. There was a couple there that were good, yeah. but like, yeah, we get it. Twenty twenty three will forever be known to me as the year foils came back. <laughs> for sure, right? Like <laughs> so many you, foil covers. Yeah. you nailed it in one. Yep. DC, Marvel. Uh, convention exclusives are the foil version of the cover that's already popular. But it, okay, but it peaked when DC did the foil cover of the reprint, right? The facsimile with the foil cover. I, that's the peak, <laughs> right? Marvel and DC are both that's doing the, sh- the sh- sh- shark jump moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every facsimile that comes out now has a foil version. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so many foil, foil covers. And I was a sucker for some of them. I have a handful of them. Part too. of me is like, if I'm going to buy a facsimile, I might as well have the shiny version. <laughs> I'm going to get the shiny one, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> All right, best comic movie or TV show? Uh, I shouted out The Marvels, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Loki season two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sc- Scott Pilgrim takes off. Yep. That was such a good I one. I loved. Um, DC just had Aquaman come out. That came out this year? Uh, <laughs> it existed? As did Blue Beetle, as did The Flash. Uh-huh. Some um, of the movies of all time. Yeah. Movies of time. <laughs> Definitely came out. But really early on in the year, we had Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. And I think that's an easy yep. Yep. easy winner. A continued brilliance of the already stellar Spider-Verse movies. I think everything else kind of fell victim to the narrative of superhero fatigue. Yeah. And then this one was one that just people generally loved. Mm-hmm. Um. I will say the big knock on it is that it doesn't have an ending. It's just kind of like, wait for part two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold. Hold, please. <laughs> so that's that's the big knock on Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. But even still, it seemed to transcend or rise above the crop of the It's almost like the they didn't. Stuff. Uh, they have to know if they released a six-hour movie, people would sit through it. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Like, give me a twenty-minute intervention, and I'll sit through anything. Exactly. Like that franchise is so good that, mm. like, it could have been five hours long, and like, just like Andy said, give me twenty minutes in the middle to check my phone to make sure my kids are alive, and then I can go to the bathroom, and then let's let's do it again, part two. Let's go. Yeah, but they can't sell you two tickets that way. I I would buy two. It, yeah, whatever. I would too. Whatever. I would buy two tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Best Mini Maxi of oh. 2023. Uh-huh. Uh, I feel like a lot of creators now are just saying, I would rather do a Mini or a Maxi series, yeah. and I'm going to do my prestige stuff there because it can be self-contained. Yeah. I don't have to worry about like a 40-issue four, arc, or I don't have to worry about telling my story that would be 16 issues if I know that it's going to be 12 and I have to get it done in 12, I would rather just do that. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess another trend I've noticed is just more people taking things to committed maxis and minis this mm-hmm. past year, which has meant some really good ones. Um, the Coal. Yep. Blue Book. Yep. I loved Louise Simonson's Jean Grey, uh-huh. which I think yeah. a lot of people slept on, um, which is a fantastic comic. Batman One Bad Day, so many good. All the One Bad Days were good. Yeah. So many good series. So I wasn't sure where to throw this because it's just a series of one shots. Yeah. But this is a good category for it. But that whole run was just almost like, and this was the intention, but it's like, it's the killing joke for each Batman rogue, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and it was hit after hit after hit after hit. Yeah. I don't think any one of them. None of them was bad. There was not a weak one in the bunch. Yeah. And like the Riddler one and the Clayface one in particular are like, to me, like the definitive stories now. I thought Zero Day was going to be the best Riddler story Mm -hmm. of my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I might be wrong. You know? (laughs) Yeah. They did recently did a collected hardcover editions of all those. And they are in the slip cover. Oh, God. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Little shelf art. And who added Murder World to our list of mentions? Also me. Right. Again, kind of same thing because it was just a series of one shots. Yeah. But it was also kind of an event. Um, yeah. And it was really good. Really good. This could be a yearly event for Marvel. Yep. To be completely honest. And guess and- who wrote it? Best writer loser, Jed McKay. Jed McKay. <laughs> I think we know who Vargas's best writer would have been. No, he was my best writer last year. Okay. Uh, yeah, but again, really fun. I, you can call it a mini series, whatever. Uh, focusing on like a different hero throughout this like arcade story. Yeah, it's really fun stuff. And like a dark arcade story. Like, yeah, it got brutal. Yeah, very it, Hunger Games. And it like the tonal shift that Marvel leaned or, or let Jed McKay lean into for that. Was kind of inspiring and not really, you know, I wasn't expecting that. So yeah. I don't know. And it had one of the best splash pages of all time. It's Moon Knight, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Can you buy that? I tried. Uh, as soon as that issue came out, I looked up and the art was already sold. Of course. But the bestie goes to 
Danger Street. Hell yeah. Mm. Tom King's 12 issue maxi. Um, Talk about a, another creator with a banner a year. Huge uh, sweeping story that also seems like small when it needs to and then massive when it needs to. Every issue that came out each month was like, ugh, kind of like left me sitting back in my couch just like, oof, what did I just read? So uh, constantly look forward to that book every single month of the year. Yeah, um, I believe the first issue came out in 2022, but the breadth of it yeah. was mm-hmm. – this was 2023. The fact that Tom King could take a innocuous throwaway. Oh, just random characters. Random characters yeah. from the 70s and create such a pivotal series is just, you know, you, you when's the last time you saw that? Yeah. Never. I mean, yeah, I, truly. Like, people could say, like, well, you know, Daniel Warren Johnson's doing that with Transformers. Kind of. But, like, not really. Like, no one knew who the green team was. No one knew who Lady Cop was. Yeah. Like, these were just things that DC did in the 70s to see if they could, like, get a hit character. And Mm. then they were forgotten for, like, 40 years. Yeah. And then Tom King comes in and makes them all relevant again. (laughs) You give Tom King a character and 12 issues, and he will make you sad about it. And nine panels, and you're, (laughs) you know. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Well, what's that issue where it was just a sword fight for one issue? Fantastic. That that issue alone made people's best of lists all year. That was one of my favorite issues I read this year. So I am 100% going to get that collected edition Mm -hmm. Danger Street whenever it comes out, because it, yeah, Mike D, you're like, Definitely nail it, like, dead on Danger Street. DC should do absolute Tom King nine panel. <laughs> and it'll be like that and Rorschach More, yeah. and... Uh, 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 Miracle Man. Miracle Man, yeah. I almost said Darkseed is. I'm just like, All that's of not those. the fucking name of the book. <laughs> and Human Target. And Human Target. Oh, man, Human Target. Human Target uh, was last year. We I know, but it. still fucking good. Yeah. All right. Let me skip to one, because we mentioned Human Target. Oh, okay. Is that for horniest book? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Best death. Sure. Mm. We knew at the you know at the beginning of Human Target, so not really a spoiler here. <laughs> yeah. That human target, the titular human target, will die by That's the, his whole deal. By yeah. the end of it. <laughs> um so Best Death in parentheses, if only temporary. Sure. Yeah. Um we've got Mr. Moon Knight. I didn't put that on there. That was Mike. Miss Marvel. Yeah. The entire Justice League died. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Jean Grey. Daredevil died. Daredevil died. Jean Grey died. Uh, gods such as Odin and Zeus both died this year. There was when I started trying to think of like candidates for this topic, I was just like. They killed everybody. Was that it, duck what? in Beneath the Trees. <laughs> <laughs> was it this year that they put Odin in Thor's hammer? Yeah. Was, that, that was, was this, this year? That was this summer, yeah. Talk about a helicopter parent. <laughs> That's my winner. <laughs> o- Odin inside the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> my pick. And the, the best he goes to. Yeah. Because there can only be one. Magneto. Sure. Mm -hmm. Magneto, so far anyway, has stayed dead the longest of any of these characters. His death was very impactful during the X-Men series with this large battle for Mars against Unis. Um, Really cool plot point and and story point. And it was cool that, you know, even though the X-Men have the resurrection protocols and everything, this stuff kind of fell apart at the time Magneto died or yeah. his wishes were to not to, be to not be reincarnated again, um, that he'd kind of had it with it and maybe served a better purpose as a symbol. There was just a lot of things going on with his death that have made it more impactful. So... That that was the most impactful one to me, anyway. Yeah, yeah, but the coolest moment still. I think this happened last year, but when he got like his heart punched out, 
Yeah. And he kept his blood circulating that was fucking through rad. his own powers. <laughs> that was fucking rad. Yeah. Yeah. And the he, iron in his blood. He entered that like battle arena and they mm-hmm. were like, what weapon do you want? And he was like, nothing, baby. And he just puts <laughs> his own helmet on the other guy and just We're, crushes it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a real king. Yeah. Huge dick energy. That's, that's yeah. a big swing dick energy. <laughs> yeah. And again, props to uh, Al Ewing yeah. Yeah. for writing a lot of that awesome Magneto stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, do, any comments on Moon Knight's death before we move on from this category? Um, yeah. I, it was it's very cool the way that Jed McKay set it up. We got Black Spectre to come back. We got the whole team really reflecting on it. The actual death panel is very cool Mm -hmm. because it features all three uh, uh, personas talking to each other. And they're all on the same page going out the way they're going to go out. And then in this week's Vengeance of the Moon Knight, you get kind of the aftermath. Mm -hmm. And it's also very touching. So uh, hard to pick whether Moon Knight 30 or Vengeance of the Moon Knight 1 was like the it's better like death the issue. issue. Yeah. Um, but they work great as a pair. One, One's the dying issue. One's the death issue. Yeah. Well, w- yeah. One is like, okay, Moon Knight blows up in a bomb. But the other one is like, okay, what does the team do about it? Yeah. Yeah. Have we gotten resolution on whether he's going to like the realm of the dead? Well, so that's the whole thing. Because we're getting into it. All right. Okay. He's, he's well, I'm going to po- sit back for a little bit. He's because, got the potential because we had the whole City of the Dead series, mini series this year, which yeah. introduced Scarlet, our new Scarab. Scarlet, the third iteration of Scarlet Scarab, and Layla, mm-hmm. who is you know a TV series character made comic book character. So we don't know what Mark is doing in the afterlife. That yeah. has not been addressed. What we do know is. As a fist of Conchu, he should be resurrected by Conchu. Yeah. That's the whole deal. He's done it like four other times. Mm-hmm. But Conchu right now is imprisoned in Asgard. Yeah. So he can't resurrect Mark. Yep. And they didn't find the body. So. And there's supposed to be another Moon Knight. So it's like yeah. new fist of Conchu. Right. Or is it Mark that came back somehow yeah. non Conchu related? We don't know. Okay. Can Mark become Conchu? Is that no. possible? Conchu's no? a god. Okay. Hey, crazy thing. I mean, that. who knows? I guess. Have you seen? So this is gonna be a weird tangent. Have you seen the new Avengers event that's gonna be happening in twenty twenty four? Uh, Blood Hunt, Vampires, baby. Yeah, written by best writer loser Jed, Jed McKay. McKay. <laughs> <laughs> Taboo. <Yeah. laughs> um, Avengers has been cool. Yeah, uh, that's okay. So I'm very excited about it because yeah. more blade, a lot of first yeah. appearances in Avengers this year, and the whole vampire city thing. Mm-hmm. We really wanted to be explored more, and I think it's well, going to happen. So that's a book we didn't talk about that I really wanted to mention is the Blade book is fucking awesome. Yeah, it rules. Yeah. Best best Marvel vampire hunting book, Blade, Blade. <laughs> hands down. <laughs> All right, we've got a couple other categories. I think just two left, All and, right. and then we'll close this out. Uh, best horror comic. There's so many of them. Horror that we, th- yeah, uh, the horror, the nasty, the nasty, yeah. Uh, Where monsters lie. Where monsters, Where monsters lie. lie. Carl Starks. Uh, the call you could call a horror. The call, yeah. Invasive. Have either of you read Invasive? It's a Colin Bunn book that came out on Oni last month. No. Worth uh, checking out. Yeah. Very cool. Um Seasons Have Teeth. Yeah. yeah that was I really good. loved that book. I yeah, I hesitated to put it in here, uh, but I had to bring it up somewhere. Yeah. That book was just so gorgeous. Yep. Vicious Circle isn't was that that wasn't this year, was yeah. it? Vicious Circle mm-hmm. on Boom. Boom. Yeah. So a lot of great horror comic books. Too many to mention them all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess the message being that if you're a fan of horror, yeah, you're eating well. Yep, yeah. Archie doing, horror doing great. <laughs> yeah, that's Hell right. Yeah. Um, our bestie goes to the neighbors for sure. The neighbors, yeah, very, very, very good. Super spooky. Super yep. spooky. Cool We're, covers. Yep. Cool covers. Kind of po- very poignant. Great art. Great representation. Mm-hmm. 
great book all yeah, around. Yeah, that's a book that's that had true. really good representation did. that didn't really get acknowledged that much. Yeah. yeah. Which, isn't that what you want, though? Yeah. So, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a conf- conflicting thing of just, like, you know, on one hand, it is good that these characters just can be in stories and not have to make the news. Yeah. But you also want to celebrate the fact that, like, hey. It got written. Thank God this is fucking normal now. Yeah. That we can have these kinds of characters in comic books and people don't want to burn down stores. Well, that that is a cool part specifically about this book is that, like, the character's trans identity is important and valuable to the story. Yes. But it doesn't revolve around the story. Correct. Yeah. And it's not, like the thing that you have to be hit over the head with yes. like anything else. Right. Right. I don't want to be hit over the head with the fact that I don't know, Superman's from Kansas. Right. You know? Well, and that's why we, that's why we protest. That's why we bring things to these people's attention. It's just like, we don't want it to be, you know, a, a, a big event. They, we just want to be seen. We just want yeah. to be like heard. We just want to like want to be accepted. And then that's it. <laughs> you know what? Like fucking, yeah. we don't want to be, be yelled at for using, I don't know. Anyway. All right. We've handed out a lot of besties today. We've yeah. got one wonky to hand oh, out. Oh, we're handing out oh. a wonky. We're handing out a wonky. I thought we were out of those. The biggest controversy in comics <laughs> of 2023. <laughs> okay, there was one on this list. Did we miss Horniest? Oh, this is The Forged. It's The Forged. <laughs> Horniest is The Forged. <laughs> the, there's one on the list that I'm going to need you to explain to me. Okay. It's the it's, Eisner's It's not one. the wonky? <laughs> no, it's the Eisner's one. What's the opposite of a bestie otherwise? The worstie? The worstie. I should have been a worstie. <laughs> W-U-R-S-T. They're in our burn book. Yeah. <laughs> a sinister All right, let me go through these. So our nominees are Pregnant Joker. Hell yes. <laughs> uh, that gets a wonky for sure. Uh, Mark Millar spirals. Sure. <laughs> uh. Scott Adams is racist. He's been <laughs> yeah. racist, though. Dilbert is racist. <laughs> I think that all happened this year, right? Yeah. Sure. It was just like the very beginning of the year, so yeah. I almost forgot about yeah. it, but I was like, wait a second. Yeah. Can't enjoy Dilbert anymore. Okay. You and did then... enjoy Dilbert? Interesting. <laughs> hey, man. Ack. <laughs> That's Kathy. I fucking know. <laughs> what, is, what is Dilbert but the male white Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then the one you were asking about is Francis Rothbart uh, being removed from Eisner's nomination. So the most nominated person at the Eisner's this past year was Zoe Thurgood. Yes. Mm-hmm. The second most nominated person was this creator who had written this book, Francis Rothbart. Now, Francis Rothbart is a graphic novel that is... I would say more of like a prestigious art piece is kind of how it was like packaged. It was like a a seventy five dollar book. When I I, I said prestigious, it should have been more like a prestige. Like yeah. this is like yeah. you upper, know like very expensive fine up, art, upper class fine art sort of thing is how it was sold. Yeah. Is this on Fantagraphics? It is on Fantagraphics. Fuck, of course it is. Um, it was. Written and illustrated by a guy who's a professor of art. He's gotten a lot of criticism from his students for using too much sexuality and violence as like conversation points in the classes. And so there was a lot of just complaints about him as a person. Huh. And he often belittled cartoonists who were you know trying to find their way to like being creators and creating things like graphic novels and he would belittle them and then he wrote his own graphic novel so a lot of bad will there i think i kind of remember this then the book itself so it is about a feral child who is of like asian descent who is Again, feral, <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> which just like isn't a great motif, uh-huh. and is just horny and like trying to fuck things all the time in like the wilderness. What? 
And so you've got like child sexuality, child like violence, um, a lot of racial stereotype things. Why would you pay seventy five dollars for that? And it was trying to be sold as like, <laughs> why were the Eisners just like, you know what, we should fine, fucking nominate this. fine art by this uppity asshole who doesn't respect other people in the comic book industry, and it started this whole conversation about like, well. Let's take a look at the people who are voting on the Eisners this year. They're all, mm-hmm. it's a panel of six people. They're all white, upper class people. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> so, Get the heck out of town. So it was ultimately removed from contention. And part of it was like the creator being like, I don't care. Like, I don't need awards to feel validated, which again, like. Yeah, you do. Yank, yank. Um, so all around, the, I think the whole thing just left a bad taste in everybody's mouth about like that is what yeah. sort of Oof. people were being nominated and like what their art was. Like, did people really read this, or were they just like this is supposed to be a prestige mm-hmm. sort of thing and it looks artsy and different? But yeah. when you look at the subject matter, it's kind of grotesque, yeah. um, juvenile and juvenile, yeah. Can I can I put in a submission for the wonky? Yeah. Fables being released into the public domain, <laughs> oh, but yeah. actually not being released into the public domain. Uh-huh. Yeah. And That's then finding you know. out that Bill William Ham is uh, a piece of a shit. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I forgot that one. That's a great one. Um okay, but our worsty there can only be one goes to fake slabs. The CGC controversy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sending the collecting world spiraling. How many of your uh, Mark, chaos, chaos, <laughs> Mark chaos. Jewelers inserts actually have Mark Jewelers inserts in them? <laughs> and uh, do you have lower grade copies of things? I just sent in some books to get reholdered mm-hmm. to CBCS. And to varying success, to uh, the, one of them came back several points under what it had been graded. Mm-hmm. And you know, is that inconsistency in CBCS's quality control, or is that someone manipulating one of their slabs and putting a book that shouldn't have that grade yeah. in one of those cases? I'll never know. All I know is just that I paid too much for a comic book somewhere along the lines there. It's an interesting discussion because I was talking to Mike about this because he brought it up in the text chain, but he sent in a CBCS book to get regraded or reslapped, essentially. Yeah, reholdered. And the grade went down. In, to, in my eyes, that shouldn't happen. Is you either stay at the grade that it, it, it got, or if you got it pressed and cleaned, it should go up. The fact that they can lower their own grade it seems bullshit. Seems like illegal. It's basically, <laughs> to me, it's like CBCS telling you, "Oopsie, you cannot trust." Yeah, our grades. Yeah, like it's supposed to be an end all, be all thing, mm-hmm. and whether their cases are easy, easily tampered with, mm-hmm. or their grading is just all over the place and it just depends on who you get that day. I honestly <laughs> <laughs> then that you know obviously that's a problem. Um so I had the the biggest whammy for me was um a uh, new Teen Titans first appearance of Raven Cyborg and I think Starfire mm-hmm. all in the DC Presents issue went from a 96 to a 92. Right. Which like that's a you hear that, you're like, oh, that's not that bad. It's a fucking huge amount of value. Plummet yeah. in the grading scale for comic books. Yeah. Um, and then I had another book that was Apocalypse's first appearance mm-hmm. that went from a 9.4 to a 9.2. So smaller change, but a change nonetheless from CBCS grade to CBCS grade. Shouldn't happen. For just a reholder. 100% should not have happened. <laughs> I would have been fucking furious. Yeah. I would have been like, you know what? Then fucking. Ugh. I would have charged me. Then don't grade it. Yeah, I w- I would have been mad had m- so many of the other comic books not worked out so well for me. Yeah, I mean you did have some. I had some. A, I had a, winners. I had an Edge of Spider Verse two come up to a nine point eight. 
Yeah. Which increased the value by hundreds of dollars and made offset anything yeah. by far. So Because you're definitely going to sell it. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely not going to be buried with it. Yeah, definitely. Okay, that is the worst slash wonky award winner. For so, sure. I yeah, I think there is a lot of, you know, we've trusted and gone by the the these couple companies for a long time and the most trusted one has now been seemingly easily undermined yeah exposed yeah so you know how much do you trust grades of your current collection how much do you trust grades of things that are on ebay yeah um we'll grade your comics it's something to think about it's like but like that is the the gamble with human error in this Mm -hmm. process because you can't have a computer do this or like some kind of AI program that like can be set in parameters. Like all three of us can see a comic book in three different grading realms. But that, but that's the whole point of sending it in to get graded. That's what you're paying for when you send them to this service is to standardize. it. I agree. I agree. But like, so why, and I guess this will be the discussion all through 2024. It should, like, it what's should the, not evolve over time. I know, but what's the standard? Why isn't? Why aren't they all not adhering to the same yeah. standard? Like Derek and Jim shouldn't grade the comic differently. Like they should. They should each come out with the same grade when yeah. when yeah. like when there's like a blind testing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, and there should be some kind of guarantee, right? That if if they do lower your grade to yeah. meet the standard, they give you the offset of value i i kind of wonder if like i i don't know how the grading thing works like if if like let's say greater one says uh this is a 9.6 and like does that go to like a higher up and they're just like okay 9.6 sign off or does like the higher up do a double check of just like okay well they say it's a 9.6 i'm looking this over i agree this is a 9.6 i know cgc is very transparent about their process i don't know how much about cbcs it just seems like in that industry there should be a lot of checks and balances as far as at least two sets of eyes looking at everything i think there's um three people who look at a comic i think it's okay two graders and then a a dog it's like two like jun- it's like two junior graders and then a senior grader, I guess is the maybe the best way to put it. Okay. And then maybe if, switch those. If they're all within Oh fuck. Oh, I just got a cramp in leg my cramp, leg. Leg cramp. <laughs> a live leg live cramp leg on the cramp. show. That's the worst of twenty twenty four. That hurt so bad. It's like still going up my this leg. This has never happened. A, a full on <laughs> oh, medical emergency. Happening on the show. Mike, do are there any more awards? I'm so hydrated, too. Yeah, get this man a banana. <laughs> get this uh, man two bananas. <laughs> no. We're just going to vamp on this bullshit until the end of time. So let, let's end it. All right, folks. Thanks so much. This was our best of 2023. As a reminder, you can visit us at firstissueclub.com. All the social medias, we're on them. And if you want more First Issue Club content, go to patreon.com forward slash First Issue Club for more hilarity. Until next year. Bye.